classic properties of the rock. Hello everybody, welcome to laboratory number three. Laboratory number three is confined compression and elastic modulus determination. In this laboratory, we are going to perform triaxial measurements to determine elastic properties of the rock. The principle that we use in this laboratory is similar to the procedure that we follow for laboratory one when we're trying to calculate UCS. So it means that again, we are going to apply an axial stress to a rock. We are going to apply stress deforming the rock and fracturing the rock. But the main difference now is that we are going to place our sample in a vessel with fluid and we are going to apply through a fluid a confining stress over the sample. Consequently, we are going to have again an axial stress and a vertical strain. And now our young modulus and our peak stress are going to be function not only on the rock properties, but also on the confining that we are applying in the rock. Uh, another parameter that is going to be useful in our analysis is the differential stress, which is the difference between the axial stress and the confining stress. Compared to laboratory one, we are adding one more component in our analysis, which is the fluid pump. Here, the, we are going to have again the sample where we are, are applying the differential stress. And as I mentioned before, we are going to have a, the sample submerged into a confining vessel. In, in this, this confining vessel is going to be connected to a fluid pump. And this fluid pump is going to allow us to increase the confining pressure in the system. And once we set up the confining pressure until the value that we want, we are going to apply our differential stress and perform our measurements. The workflow that we follow in the laboratory is similar as the workflow that we follow for laboratories one and two. It's going to have, again, step one, where we measure the sample, a step two, when we prepare the assembly and the sample, and where we, where we set up our loading frame, step three, where we fracture the rock, and finally, uh, step four, where we analyze our data. When we measure the sample, the step that we follow is exactly the same as the one that we observe for laboratory one. We are going to control again that the sample is straight and we are going to control that the sample uh, has nearly the same values at different uh, points of our measurement. The diameter is going to be the average of these points. Then through measuring the length at different angles, we are going to control that the end faces are parallel in the rock. Again, we are going to measure at different angles and we are going to average our measurements. Finally, we are going to weight the sample that we have. Now we are going to uh, initiate the setup of our loading frame. So the first step in this setup is just controlling through a level that the bottom and the top of the loading frame are parallel one to each other. Now it's time to prepare the vessel with our sample. So now we have to add several components to prepare the vessel that we are going to uh, put in the loading frame. So the components that we are using are the vessel, 
the membrane that we are going to put the sample to isolate it from the fluid and the end caps, the plastic O-rings, the vacuum grease, the water, which is going to work as our confining fluid, the metal, metal and golden O-rings just to isolate the confining fluid from the outside and the screws that we are going to use just to adjust the vessel. So our first step is first putting the sample in the membrane and we are going to put the sample in the mill so we have nearly one inch at each side of the, uh, of the membrane. Now what we do is we are going to put every component until the sample looks like this. And to achieve this, it, first we are going to put vacuum grease in the inner walls, in these areas. Now, after we put the vacuum grease, we are going to place the end caps. The short end cap is going to be at the bottom and the long end cap is going to be at the top. Finally, we are going to increase the ceiling by putting plastic O-rings at each side of the sample. This way, we are going to isolate our sample from the confining fluid. Now we are going to take the vessel. If we take a look inside the vessel, what we are observe is that we have a small spot in here, which is going to be the end cap slot. We have to place our sample in here and we are going to fill it with water. Before doing that, we have to check that our pump and bleed valves that are to the side of the vessel are closed. Once we check that they are closed, we can fill the vessel with water along the inner thinner section that we have in here. So the way that our vessel with our sample and membrane, it looks, it's going to be like this. Once we done this, we can close the vessel. To do that, first we are going to take our metal O-ring. In this metal O-ring, we have to put a vacuum grease in the inner side on top and on the bottom or the bottom of the metal ring. Once we do that, we have to place the metal O-ring. After that, we have to place the golden O-ring. We can use the screws that we, may, that we see in here at the back just to fix this golden O-ring. Once we do that, what we are going to obtain is the closed vessel with our two valves closed. Now we can put this vessel in the loading frame. Once we put the vessel in the loading frame, we are going to connect it with the pump. And we are going to take out the air that is still remaining in our vessel. To do this, first, we are going to open both the bleed and the pump valves. And we are going to start using our pump. So first we are going to hit our constant flow and our lining here is going to change into CFA. We are going to place A and we are going to input that a flow rate of 10 milliliters per minute. And we are going to click enter. Uh, first, before, before hitting run, we are going to check that we have a low pressure in here. And we start hitting run. And what we are doing is we are filling with water from the pump to displace the air that we have in here. So what we are going to control is that the bleeding valve is plenty with air. And once what that water start coming out, we can hit stop. 
if we see that this pressure in here start increasing when we are doing this we have to to hit stop immediately just because of safety once we take out all the water uh, all the air and see that the bleed bulb is is just releasing water uh, it means that our system is closed and filled with water and now we can close the bleed bulb now we can start operating our loading frame setup just a review from laboratory one what we can see is that again our two measurements that we are going to be interested about are going to be load, load one and displacement two and that by pressing up or down we can move our frame either up or down and that to change the speed we are going to click speed and with f2 f3 and f4 we are going to change the speed that we are using during the sitting we are going to use again 0.22 inch per minute and during the displacement speed we are going to use again 0.02 inch per minute now based on that we are going to move up our frame until it touch the upper part of the frame we will realize that because force in our board is going to slightly increase again once we do that we have to set up the pressure that we are going to use for the measurement to do that the first step is just check that our bleed valve is closed and that our pump valve is open so the pump and the vessel are connected now we are going to use a constant pressure increase which means that we are going to press constant pressure a and we are going to set up as objective pressure 50 psi we are going to hit enter and run and this value should increase what we are going to observe are two main things first we have to observe that the pressure in here is going to increase up to 50 psi and it shall remain at 50 psi also what we have to check is that the axial force that we are reading in the in our loading frame is going to uh, increase as well this is because we are applying some confining on the sample and this force is going to be transmitted to the force that we are applying to a sample in here so if if we see that these two indicators then it means that we are good to go and we can continue increasing the confining pressure to do that we are going to repeat steps two and four reaching step by step the pressure and not in a single run until we uh, uh, achieve our desired confining pressure once we are at the our desired confining pressure we have one la last step to do which is place and hold the strain gauge this uh, we will see that this is done when we place our strain gauge and displacement should slightly increase a picture of how it should look like is like this where we have our vessel touching the upper part of our loading frame and the strain gauge also placed and fixed at the top now we have to do just a double check that we already did the leveling we see the sample we prepare the vessel and the strain gauge is placed which means that we are ready to measure the first step that we are going to do is just increasing our force so we are moving uh, up our vessel 
until our force increases up to 2,000 pounds. Then we are going to decrease this value to 1,000, 15,000, uh, 1,500 uh, pounds. And then we are going to increase the uh, stress until rock fracturing, where we are going to observe a drop in the force. Once we observe this drop, we have to stop our measurement. Now, again, because of safety, it's very important to, before disassembling, we have to reduce the vessel confining pressure to zero and to release the pressure that we have there in the system. Also, we have to double check that our axial load is nearly zero or in the same range of values. Once we do that, then we can take out the vessel and we can extract it, disassemble and clean it. And now we can record and take the picture of the sample and extract the data file for analysis. The sample, once we extract it, it will look like this. Now let's move to data analysis. Again, as we observe for laboratory one, we are going to have two main measurements, force and displacement. From these measurements, we are going to measure the jump modulus and the peak strength that we have for that specific confining pressure. So again, we are turning these parameters of force and vertical displacement into stress and strain. And based on the trajectory that we did, we can estimate a jump modulus, modulus loading and a jump modulus during unloading. And based on the peak strain that we read, we can uh, see how uh, the, the, the strengths of the rock for that specific confining pressure. If we perform the measurement for, uh, say, for several measurements, then we can obtain different values and different uh, more circles. Combining all of them, we can calculate an envelope, which is going to tell us the cohesion and the internal friction angle. And from that internal friction angle, actually we can calculate, which is this angle at, the, at which the rock is being fractured. In here, what we can see is that actually the peak stress is going to be our sigma one, and the confining pressure is, our, is going to be our sigma three. Uh, finally, when we compare this data with other data, what we observe is that, as we mentioned before, this angle is in this point in here is going to tell us the fracture angle that we shall expect based on the confining that we are applying to a rock. 